Welcome to the online training for the Integrated Monarch Monitoring Program, or IMMP. The IMMP is a program to collect data on monarch butterflies and their habitats across their entire breeding range. We're excited to have you join this effort. In this video, you'll learn how to prepare your self-selected site for monitoring. The IMMP allows participants to monitor random and non-random or self-selected sites. A random site is recommended for those who can do this. It's a site that's been selected by the program and can be adapted by you. A self-selected site is for people who cannot access random sites near them, or who are charged with monitoring certain properties, like the parks they work for, or who have personal properties they strongly prefer to monitor. Thank you for using the IMMP to track monarchs and their habitat on your site. To expand a bit more on random and self-selected sites, random priority blocks are situated across the monarch's U.S. breeding range. These 10 by 10 kilometer cells were randomly selected through a specialized process. They are random and do not necessarily indicate higher quality or potential for habitat. The website below shows where to access an interactive map with random blocks. If you zoom into these blocks, you'll see dozens of colored dots. These are the actual random points that could be monitored. If you're not monitoring at these exact points, yours is a self-selected site. Even if your park falls within this random priority block, the red outline shown here, or if you're monitoring very close to a random point but not actually at it, then it's a self-selected site. Any site monitored for the IMMP has its own land use, what we call here a site type. The five main site types are protected grassland, unclassified grassland, agriculture, rights of way, and developed open space. There are a few options within the agriculture type, so consult the IMMP guidebook to pick the one that applies to your land. To record your self-selected site and get some basic site information, you can use this mapping tool shown at the website below. Let's say that we want to monitor this area, which we've recently enrolled in a federal conservation program. First, we'll want to see approximately where to set up our IMMP plot. Review the IMMP guidebook or the plot setup training video to learn more about the shape that your plot may take. This could be a rectangle, square, linear, or irregular shape. You can use the blue measure tool to check out the dimensions of your site and see where one of these plot shapes may fit. First, we'll see if our standard 200 meter by 50 meter rectangle will fit. In our measure tool, click the length button, then make sure it's in meters. Click at one end and the other end of your site to measure a line. Here, it looks like the standard rectangle will fit oriented north-south. I recommend using this tool to draw approximately where your IMMP plot will be. Place the plot in an area that is representative of the site. If it's on a hill, orient it lengthwise up and down the hill to capture the vegetation along that gradient. Don't bias your data by placing it in the best spot or the spot with the most milkweed. Remember, your plot is supposed to be representative of the larger site it's situated in. You can then minimize this tool and open the Site Editor tool, the orange button at the bottom. The instructions in the pop-up box tell you to click on the red dot and then place it at your starting corner. Once you click your corner, it will ask for some information about your plot. Fill in your name, and in order to get your block ID, a key component to naming your plot, you'll need to zoom out until you see the green lines. These form squares that each have a unique number. Take note of the number for the square that your plot is in and write it in the site editor. Next, enter your point ID. As it notes here, it starts with the letters SS for self-selected, followed by your three initials and the number one. If you're monitoring more than one point in this block, increase the number to two, three, and so on. Select your site type. Consult the IMMP guidebook if you have questions. Then you'll need to select the three letter abbreviation for that site type, which is listed right there in its name. This helps you build your plot ID. Add any notes, and then select how the IMMP program may share the data. 
We recommend being able to share the biological data at the point level, so research, researchers know exactly where the habitat or monarch activity is. However, you could fuzzy the data to a 10 by 10 kilometer block or to the county. Now we have enough information to create our plot ID. Our plot ID is ACL for Agricultural Conservation Land 034011 for the monarch block that it's in, that green square that we looked at earlier, and SSDXP1 for our unique point ID. You'll write this on every form you fill out and use it to register your, for your site for data entry. Finally, click Save. Once you click Save, you'll see your point and a portion of its label appear on the map. You can edit or delete your point by opening the site editor again and clicking on your point. Now you'll also need to know the point's coordinates so that you can get there in the field. To do that, on the lower left of your screen, click the little crosshairs icon next to the moving coordinates. It will then say, click the map to get coordinates. Then click on your point. The coordinates appear at the bottom left corner. Copy those down on your site description form. If your plot isn't oriented in a cardinal direction, you'll need to get the bearing, or the angle, it's oriented, so you can set up the plot in the field. In this example, our rectangle is oriented slightly northeast. Click on the green distance and direction tool at the bottom. Use the drop down menu to select because we'll draw our angle here using points. Then click the little location bubble icon here. Check the box for create line interactively. You might need to go back and click the location bubble icon again. Then click your first point and your second point. You'll see your bearing or angle in two places. This will need to go on your site description form. If you have a small or irregularly shaped site, you may need to get its size to know how far apart to space the transects for Activity 1. If you're not conducting Activity 1, you don't need this. Go back to, to the measure, blue measure tool that we used earlier and then click the area button. Draw the boundary of your site. With the area you just calculated, use Table 7 from the IMMP guidebook to determine your transect spacing. You can fill out a lot of your site description form with the information we just got from this mapping tool. Your original and verified site type will be the same since you knew what it was going into this because it's a self-selected site. You also have the plot ID and details about the plot configuration and location, including the coordinates. This will help you set up the plot in the field. You can get the other coordinates for points two, three, and four while you're in, your, in the field using your phone or your GPS, or you can use the same process to click where they approximately are on the map when you do the outline of your plot. Sometime before you enter your data into the IMMP data entry portal, you'll have to register your site. Go to the website shown below, click on the Fields and Activities Protocol page, and scroll to the bottom for directions on registering your site in the data entry portal. That completes the step-by-step -step training on how to adapt a self-selected site. Remember, these steps are written out in a document available on the IMMP Training Resources webpage. If you have questions, contact your local monitoring coordinator or the Monarch Joint Venture at monitoring at monarchjointventure.org or the website shown here. Thank you and happy monitoring.